Today, we're diving into Holley's Terminator X EFI for Fords. We're going to install one on my Fox Body Mustang. Since my 4i came with a carburetor, we'll be doing some slight modifications to take full advantage of all of Terminator X's features. The Terminator X brings easy to tune capabilities and even transmission control. The end result will give us excellent drivability on the streets and consistency at the track. Since we can monitor and view all our gauges on one of Holly's Pro Dashes, I went ahead and pulled all the aftermarket gauges, wires, relays, and switch panels from the old carburetor days. To really take advantage of our EFI conversion, I'm also going to be adding a multi-coil setup so we'll no longer need our coil, distributor, or single channel ignition. From a wiring standpoint, our Terminator X is going to clean up and simplify our conversion. Even though I got a power glide transmission, I'm going to go ahead and install a Terminator X Max, giving me the option to install an electronically controlled transmission down the road. Terminator X requires seven sensor connections. Manifold air temperature, map sensor, coolant temperature sensor, TPS, oil pressure, fuel pressure, our wideband O2 sensor, and finally our CAN bus connector. The manifold air temperature and coolant temperature sensors are included in your Terminator X kit. Depending on your application, you might need some additional sensors. We picked up two pressure sensors and one map sensor for our blown application. Our Terminator X kit comes with five harnesses. The main harness, a power harness, an injector harness, a TFI harness, and a transmission harness. We're not going to use our transmission or TFI harness since we're going on multi-coil setup and I got a power glide. Every wire and connector is clearly labeled, making this mostly a plug and play installation. Since our harness is specific to 5.0 engines with a TFI ignition, we're going to be using this coil and plug harness to convert over to a multi-coil setup. Since I had to swap over to an EFI intake, we went with Holly's High Ram. It's equipped with ports for most of our sensors. Along with Holly's 105mm throttle body, this combo should allow us to make some serious power. Before we get started fishing our main harness through the firewall, let's get all our sensors installed. Let's start with our manifold air temperature sensor. Make sure not to over tighten it. For extra clearance, we used one of Earl's 90 degree adapters for our map sensor. We installed it face down and then installed our sensor. There's also two coolant ports on either side of our high ram manifold. We use the one next to the thermostat housing. We're using one of Earl's fuel pressure gauge adapters to mount our oil pressure sensor. Make sure not to over tighten it. Our fuel pressure regulator has a gauge port where we'll mount our sensor. We'll also hook up the boost reference port with a vacuum line to our high ram manifold. And finally our wideband O2 sensor. My header collector already had a bunk, so it was a quick bolt-on. Now with our sensors installed, let's plug in the main harness. Feed the relays and the ECU connector end first through the stock firewall opening. It's easier if you remove the relays and the fuse covers. Since we didn't have a stock firewall grommet, we used Earl's seal it grommet. It's super flexible and I was able to pass all the connectors through. Before we install the high ram top, let's go ahead and connect our manifold air temperature sensor and our map sensor. The connector for our map sensor is a GM weather pack connector. Since we're using Holley's stainless steel sensors, we're going to use this harness to keep everything plug and play. Let's plug in our map sensor and our manifold air temperature sensor. Now we can install our high ram top. Let's connect our throttle position sensor and our IAC connector. Since I'm using an LS throttle body, I added the 4-pin IAC connector to mate up with my LS throttle body. We won't be using the Ford IAC connector. Holly sells all the pins and connectors for a quick hookup to the J1B connector. Next, let's plug in our coolant temperature sensor. Fuel pressure. Oil pressure. And finally, our wideband O2 sensor. There's a small adapter harness that will splice between the main harness and the sensor. Make sure it doesn't touch the header or other sources of high heat. All right, let's grab the injector harness. Plug in each connector, which are labeled, into its corresponding cylinder. On Fords, these are one, two, three, four on the passenger side and five, six, seven, eight on the drivers. Now we can plug in our injector harness to the main harness. Our Fox body kit comes with a bracket that bolts onto the front passenger seat studs. We can now connect the harness to the Terminator ECU. 
Let's move on to the power harness. It's very important to connect these power leads directly to the battery. Since my battery is mounted in the back, I went ahead and used a power harness loom to tuck in the handful of loose wires left. I'll connect the wires labeled 12 volt battery, 12 volt fuel, and 12 volt coils directly to the battery. We'll connect the ground wire to the chassis. We'll cut to length and terminate the main battery leads. I'm using MSD's open barrel crimp pliers along with their heat shrink and open barrel connector kit. I then finished terminating the remaining loose wires. We'll wait till we're done with our wiring before connecting to the battery. The power harness loom has plenty of room so I went ahead and stuffed my fuel pump wires in there too. These wires will be going up to our relay block up in the front passenger footwell. The last of the loose wires to connect from our main harness is the red with the white stripe. By using a fuse tap, we can just route this wire to the fuse box and use slot number 18. This switch 12 volt wire needs to have power while cranking and when the ignition switch is in the run position. To trigger our fuel pump, electric fan, and electric water pump, we're going to be using MSD's solid state relay. With our Terminator X using Holly EFI software, we can use a built in logic to turn these devices on or off. Here's a master diagram for our MSD solid state relay. With four channels, we'll use the first two for our spall fan and electric water pump. The other two channels will be for our fuel pump and our trans brake. We'll use Terminator X's input output harness to control these components. With the Terminator X software, we can control when we turn them on and under what circumstances. For our electric fan and pump, I made some quick connector leads. I'll ground them at my front grounding point, which is connected to the chassis and the engine block. To hook up the main power leads to MSD's power state relay, I used 4 gauge wire and connected it directly to my starter solenoid. I then mounted the relay block to the passenger side footwell where it will be up and out of the way. I'll use this diagram to connect all the wires. First I hooked up all the heavy gauge power leads to the relay block. Make sure to use this applied blue Loctite to secure the power wires. I then connected my input output wires into the relay block. Since all of these are ground outputs, they will go connected to the lower row of the relay block. There is a chassis ground wire that must also be connected. Our green 12 volt fuel pump wire will go to the channel 3 on the 12 volt side. I also hooked up the yellow wire from the fuel controller to output number 4. Our trans brake wire will go to input number 1. We'll set up our input output wires in the Terminator X software in our next video. Now I can connect my input output connector to the main harness. And that wraps up all our Terminator X wiring. Tune in next time when we install our MSD Pro 600. For more Terminator X tech, head on over to holly.com.